Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, in the previous session uh, we have learnt about uh, anatomy and other basic aspects of uh, corneal tissue and in today's session we will talk about tissue engineering aspects of cornea. The topics that, uh, that, uh, that has to be uh, that will be covered in uh, today's session will be prerequisites for designing scaffolds for corneal tissue and polymers and cells that have been already used in corneal tissue engineering and commercially available co co corneal replacements. Uh, Let us begin with prerequisites for designing tissue engineering scaffold for corneal tissue. The first prerequisite is protection. As we know the eye is exposed to external environment and it has to be protected from uh, bacterial and other microbial infections. Uh, the outermost uh, epithelial layer contains tight junctions and also microvilli and uh, uh, it prevents from microbial invasion and uh, uh, microbial invasion. And transparency, as we know the cornea, the uh, cornea is transparent in nature, the transparency of uh, cornea uh, is maintained by hydration uh, level of this stromal layer. Uh, the excess of uh, uh, water uh, in the stromal layer is removed from the bottom endothelium layer by using the metallic pump and thereby it maintains the transparency of uh, eye cornea. Hence, the tissue engineering construct must have transparency required for transparency. The uh, cornea is responsible for 80 percent of the refraction of the eye, hence the tissue refraction uh, that is required for the cornea. And uh, as for uh, like any other tissues, the scaffold which we prepare for cornea should be compatible with the host tissue. And the most important thing is in integration. The tissue engineering construct which we prepare for cornea must integrate with the host tissue, thereby not allowing any type of microbial invasion. Uh, here are the uh, few of the uh, work that have been done on various tissue layers of cornea. And uh, as you see here, there are uh, many types of polymers have been used, uh, both natural and synthetic polymers. As you see here, the full thick, uh, thickness cornea is, uh, uh, full thickness cornea I mean to say is all 5 layers of uh, corneal layer are tried to uh, reconstruct in these studies. As you see, uh, for these studies, cornea, collagen, chitosan and uh, uh, synthetic polymers like uh, PEG and uh, polyacrylic acids have been used and uh, stromal layer uh, stromal layer of cornea are also tried to uh, construct uh, uh, try to construct and uh, as you see here uh, the many types of uh, uh, polymers have been used keratin polylactic acid uh, gelatin uh, polyglyc we will talk about all these polymers in coming in coming slides and uh, various types of cell sources have been used for constructing the corneal tissue uh, for example primary animal derived corneal epithelial cells and uh, uh, primary animal derived corneal stromal cells, dorsal root ganglion cells and uh, they, are, uh, they have also used human corneal epithelial cells, human corneal fibroblast cells, endothelial cells and human corneal stromal cells for uh, as a cell source for uh, constructing the uh, corneal tissue. And uh, now we will talk about the various polymers that have been used for constructing the uh, corneal tissue. The, uh, the primarily used polymer is collagen. As you, as we have learnt in the previous session, uh, collag uh, the stromal layer collagen is the predominant uh, is the most predominant predominant polymer present in the cornea. 
and uh, uh, it's it's present in the uh, stromal. Uh, it's the main component of the human stromal cells, uh, stromal tissue. The drawback of uh, collagen is insufficient mechanical toughness and elasticity that is required for corneal tissue. And to overcome the drawback of uh, collagen, they tried to cross-link uh, collagen to improve the mechanical strength. And uh, the type of collagen that uh, that is used uh, has uh, its own uh, role. For example, type 1 and type 3 collagen hydrogels have adequate uh, tensile strength and elasticity, whereas uh, type 3 collagen hydrogels tend to be mechanically and optically superior. And cross linking of collagen are done using uh, the using various methods that are classified under physical, chemical and enzymatic methods. Physic under physical method UV light is been used, uh, dehydrothermal method is also used. Under chemical method formaldehyde, glutaraldehyde and genipine are used to cross link the collagen. And in enzymatic method transglutaminase is used to cross link the collagen and thereby overcome the drawbacks that are associated with the collagen. We will go on to the uh, silk. Silk fibroin, silk fibroin is the structural protein that is derived from the silkworm Bombax mori. The inherent optical uh, property of silk fibroin makes it most suitable for corneal tissue engineering. And uh, uh, this uh, silk fibroin, uh, silk fibroin is used as substrate for corneal epithelial cells. Though uh, silk fibroin provides a scaffolding material for epithelial cells, but uh, its uh, its uh, cell attachment property are not uh, as superior as collagen, as it lacks the uh, natural ECM protein. To overcome that what they have done is they have introduced RGD domain into the silk fibroin membrane and thereby they tried to improve the cell attachment property of silk fibroin. And compared, uh, compared with collagen the advantages of using silk fibroin is it is simple to produce and uh, modify and as well as it is easier to produce the porous scaffold using silk fibroin. And we will go on to the uh, decellularized cornea. Uh, the corneal tissue they decellularize, uh, remove all the cellul, uh, cell cells and the cell debris from the corneal tissue and they use for corneal uh, replacement purposes. But the problem is the availability of the human cornea tissue for uh, preparing the decellularized cornea, hence are, uh, are taken from porcine or bovine. And, uh, uh, as as it is a decellularized cornea, its optical and mechanical property are similar to the natural corneal tissue. And uh, the approaches to uh, decellularize the corneal tissue are uh, listed over here. They use the uh, various sorry, they use the various types of uh, detergents like ionic detergents, non-ionic detergents, zwitter ionic detergents and freeze drying and opti uh, osmotic shock. And uh, uh, apart from uh, these techniques recently they have uh, tried to use the high hydrostatic pressure and supercritical carbon dioxide. Chitosan, uh, chitosan is derived from the chitin by deacetylation process and it has been reported that primary bovial corneal epithelial cell seeded on the pure chitosan membrane showed improved uh, proliferation. The incorporation of uh, chitosan can promote the optical transparency and mechanical strength of the uh, collagen membrane. Uh, the, but the problem with the chitosan is it is a uh, uh, it is very uh, poorly soluble in the physiological medium. Hence, uh, the derivation of chitosan has been tried out. Uh, for example, hydroxyethyl chitosan, which has a very good solubility, and also they have tried to use hydroxypropyl chitosan. Compared, uh, the hydroxypropyl chitosan has a comparable optical transparency and it has uh, comparable water content and high glucose permeability compared to the natural human cornea. Although, uh, Although uh, chitosan has dem uh, demonstrated great potential for corneal uh, 
tissue engineering, uh, it is it is not used uh, alone. It is blended with other polymer and hence used. Uh, so far, we have discussed about the naturally occurring polymers. Now, we will talk about few of the synthetic polymers. The preliminary uh, predominantly um, widely used uh, synthetic polymer for corneal tissue engineering is polymethyl methacrylate. Uh, polymethyl methacrylate is a transparent thermoplastic polymer uh, which can be uh, which can be modified to achieve the required mechanical properties like toughness and uh, stiffness and poly uh, pmma it has ability to block uv light hence it's more suited for corneal tissue engineering However, the usage of PMMA is impeded due to tissue necrosis, vitreous, vitreous opacities and poor adhesion between the PMMA and host corneal collagen. Vitreous opacities uh, I mean to say is vitreous uh, fluid contains 98 percent of water and 2 percent of hyaluronic acid. Uh, what happens is uh, tiny clots are formed and uh, they form in the eyeball and they move along with the eyeball movement and that uh, hinders the uh, that is known as uh, vitreous opacities. Several uh, uh, efforts have been taken to overcome these drawbacks for example, uh, coupling uh, PMMA with uh, PEG uh, polyethylene glycol and uh, they also try to combine other polymer uh, polyhema with uh, PMMA and uh, they also try to improve the antibacterial activity of uh, PMMA by using the antimicrobial agents into these uh, PMMA polymers. And uh, these are the few commercially uh, available corneal replacements and uh, as you see here uh, most of the core material that are used for these corneal replacements are synthetic in nature PMMA, uh, polyhema, uh, acrylic polymer and uh, as you see uh, the major drawbacks of these commercially available corneal replacements is integration. The poor adhesion between the cornea and the uh, tissue engineering construct. Hence, uh, future studies should be focused on to improve the integration of these tissue engineering constructs with the host. Uh, uh, host tissue. Uh, one more major aspect of uh, cornea is cornea corneal wound healing. Like any other uh, uh, wound healing process which which happen uh, uh, which that happens in our body, uh, even corneal wound healing involves four stages like hemostasis, inflammation, cell proliferation, and remodeling. But the problem with uh, corneal wound healing is uh, cornea contains uh, limbus region and this uh, limbus region is immune privilege and angiogenic privilege. Uh, that means, the it lacks uh, it naturally lacks neovascularization and uh, uh, immune cells in the uh, limbus region and uh, that 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 is required for the uh, transparency of the corneal tissue. And uh, as you see here the wound healing process involves the step called inflammation and uh, due to this the immune cells march into the uh, limbus region they destroy the limbus region and uh, there will be a uh, neovascularization takes place as you see over here and uh, that leads to the corneal opacity. And uh, uh, as as uh, in any other wound healing process, wound healing leads to the scarring of the tissue that ultimate ultimately leads to the loss of vision. And uh, uh, there are many attempts angiogenic privilege and immune privilege of cornea. For example, amniotic membrane. Amniotic membrane contains uh, naturally contains anti-inflammatory, anti-angiogenic uh, compounds, and using this uh, amniotic membrane for corneal wound healing, uh, corneal wound healing uh, prevents the uh, or lessens the inflammation stage. 
and uh, many formal is, uh, pharmaceutical agents uh, that are that are anti angiogenic uh, or anti inflammatory agents uh, are used for uh, corneal wound healing to uh, to achieve the uh, immune and angiogenic privilege uh, but at the same time uh, exosomes exosomes are uh, cell derived nanoscale vesicles that are secreted out secreted out and uh, these exosomes contain uh, several bioactive uh, bioactive molecules that have uh, various functionalities the exosomes that have been uh, released by corneal epithelial cells are known to uh, involve in wound healing process and uses of these uh, exosomes for uh, wound healing process for corneal uh, wound healing uh, are proven uh, better. Thank you.